A bomb attack in Milan against Italian leader Benito Mussolini killed 17 bystanders. South Africa adopts a new national flag and the keel to the first 1,000 foot long ocean liner is laid, White Star Line Oceanic, but ultimately would be delayed and eventually canceled. The year is 1928, and this short-lived basement entry-level sleeve valve car was offered by Falcon Knight. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that digs the lost and forgotten brands. We also cover the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars or brands that are no longer around. This channel exists for you to be inspired to drive something different. Also, if this car sparks a memory, please share it in the comment section. We dive in deep with specs, period ads, button switches and knobs. Most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel, nay, if that sounds like a community that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. I found this 1928 Falcon Knight was part of the Old Car Festival, which is a pre-war car show at the Greenfield Village in Dearborn, Michigan, right next to the Henry Ford. All of the cars are before 1932, unmodified, and they drive them around in the streets. Not only that, they're in a period-correct town. Lots of people dress period-correct. So it's almost like going back in time for a weekend, which was really great. I honestly can't say enough good things about that car show, and honestly, it's probably my favorite car show this side of the Mississippi. It's honestly what the car hobby should be about. It should be about sharing your rides and experiences with everybody, and that's what that show is. You can experience those cars for what they were. A lot of people will say that those cars are going away, but that's not true. People are still keeping them. And I saw lots of kids, people younger than me, driving cars older than both of us. For those that may have never heard of the Greenfield Village, this is what it is. Henry Ford, you could think whatever you want of the guy, but he saw that what was happening to stuff, it was just getting destroyed and lost to time. So he decided to save a couple things. The village is almost 100 buildings on 200 acres. Most of the buildings are the actual buildings, like the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop. Falcon Knight was produced in conjunction with Willis Overland Company of Toledo, Ohio, but it was a totally separate company. Falcon Knight Motors would produce cars from 1927 to 1928, headquartered in Detroit, Michigan, but they built cars in Elyria, Ohio at the former Garford Truck Plant. Falcon Knight was slotted between the Whippet and the more expensive Willis Knight. Interesting to note that most body parts were interchangeable between the Whippet, but mechanically a totally different animal. The Falcon Knight was the entry level sleeve valve offering selling at a price point around $1,000. Falcon Motors only built two models, the Model 10 in 1927 and the Model 12 in 1928. The Model 12 had some exterior changes we're talking about. Hood panels were different, as well as sun visors going to the cadet type on closed cars. Hood louvers were changed from vertical to three groups of horizontal. Fenders were also changed from panel crown type to a full plane crown type. Bodies were also redesigned and were ever so slightly enlarged. 1928 Falcon Knight could be had as a sedan, a coach, and or brome, coupe, roadster, the Landau and Grey Ghost offerings were dropped. In 1928, Falcon Knight set a new transcontinental record with Erwin Baker, AKA Cannonball Baker at the wheel ran a two door brome from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles, California, did 3,198 miles in 73 hours, 47 minutes, doing an average of 43 miles per hour. And you have to remember, there was an interstate highway system at this point. Roads generally looked like this. Pretty remarkable time, all things considered. The Falcon Knight's time was 10 hours faster than the transcontinental train. 
He also managed to beat the previous record by six hours and eight minutes. Real quick, a little bit about Cannonball Baker. Erwin Baker was his real name. He was famous for point-to-point -point races. In between the years of 1910 to 1930, he set 143 records. His very first record was on a 1914 Indian motorcycle. He did the transcontinental journey in 11 days on a motorcycle, which is really impressive. Most of his point-to-point -point races were sponsored, but he pushed himself to beat records. He would say, no record, no pay. In the 70s, car and driver reporter Brock Yates and Steve Smith coined the term Cannonball Baker for an informal coast-to-coast -coast run. Later, they shortened it to just Cannonball. But interesting, Erwin Baker was the original person that did Cannonball. Hence, he got his name. He is the man, the myth, the legend behind it. Both the Falcon Knight and Willis Knight used a totally different kind of engine called the sleeve valve engine, first perfected by Charles Yale Knight. It's also important to note that Willis isn't the only brand of car to use this engine. It could also be found in, but not limited to, Daimler, Panhard, Stern Knight, as well as others. It also served other applications such as British tanks and aircraft. Here is Greg to explain how a sleeve valve works. It operates with a uh, this sleeve valve engine. So the car has two sleeves that, ro that are rotated by an eccentric shaft, which operates very similar to what a camshaft does in your modern engines. And the two rods are driven half speed of the crankshaft and they open and close the exhaust ports. The sleeves only move about that much. And as you can see, there's your exhaust port opening and closing, and that's your intake opening and closing. Your piston will run up, up and down the inside of the sleeve, and uh, that's basically it. So instead of uh, <laughs> compressing springs and snapping valves, it's a completely, it's a sliding action. So it tends to be quite smooth running and quiet. The silent night. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of 109 and a half inches. It weighs around 2,875 pounds. Price, $995, which is equivalent to you spending $17,909.36 in the year 2023. What a bargain. Total production, I'm talking 1927 and 1928 with all of the different bodies, 11,041 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 158 cubic inch displacement, inline six sleeve valve, 2.6 liters. It's good for 45 horsepower, 2,600 RPM. Estimated 90 pound feet or 122 Newton meters at 1800 RPM with a bore of 2.93 inches and a stroke of 3.875 inches. Compression is five and a half to one. So let's talk styling. Just look at these bumpers, how they're designed and how they're together right there in the center with this nice insignia. Just look at how these bumpers mount to the car. Look at these fenders, how they're designed. Look at how the fender is more pronounced up here than it is down here. Inside the lights it says Falcon Knight. Looks really cool. This bar over here that connects everything together. It's got accessory lights down in here. Falcon Knight badge. Let's look at how these fenders are designed. Wood spoke wheels with a beautiful Falcon badge there in the center. Catwalk region. Toolbox the running boards. Nice Falcon Knight plate there. It's got a cowl vent, visor, the mirrors are mounted up here.
This car does have drip rails. Run the length of the car. So check out the, how this rear fender is designed. Also notice these fenders aren't flared. They don't have a bead. They're just flat. Kicks out the back back here. This car has, this car only has one light on the driver's side. The bumpers back here are split, but look at this design right here. Gas goes in there. There's a center light. So this car has two lights, but one's in the center. So that's pretty cool. There's a step and another step to get inside the rumble seat back here. This car has a window so you can talk to one another from the rumble seat. So look at the door panel. It's a really nice cloth material, the door panel is. It's got this nice map pocket, but notice it does not have an armrest. There is a door handle to get out and window crank for the big window. It's all framed out. Just take a look at this interior. The window goes down with that T handle there. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, you have the high beam switch over here, clutch, brake, gas pedal, starter button. Notice the steering wheel column goes in between the clutch and the brake pedal. Also notice how flat this floor is. Gear shift selector there and emergency brake. Check out this door panel. Notice this side does not have a pocket or an armrest. You could just put your arm on top of the door. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Just look at how this is designed. It's all framed out. On to the button switches and knobs. Starting on the left and moving right, coolant temperature. Key, notice the parking lights are to the left and the headlights are to the right. Amp meter, gasoline gauge, oil pressure. There are two poles at the bottom. If I was to guess, I would guess one of them to be the choke, the other one for the hand throttle, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Speedometer with odometer and trip. Clock, spark advanced on steering wheel. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood would look like. Up above you have the windshield wiper and there's a rear view mirror over there. Just take a gander at the greenhouse, tour to glass ratio of this car. Like I say, so sleeve valve six. Yes. This is the vacuum fuel pump. It runs off a vacuum from the yes. engine and it pulls it up from the gas tank. From the gas tank. Fuel filters right there, glass bowl. Look at the steering wheel column, how it comes down here. Single updraft carburetor. Horn, oil goes in there. You said they're leather gears that drives the uh, yeah, generator? Yeah, we'll show that on the other side. Okay. Now this here is the, where you fill the oil. And this is the, there was a grease pin in there, but they, a water pump's been replaced with new bearings and everything. So it should be good for about 5,000 miles. If cool. it needs any, it's guaranteed anyway. Oh, look at that. There's a spark plug wire. Oh, this is a doggone tube. Uh, Shoot. So what's that? Water jacket cover. Water jacket cover. Yes. Sweet. And this is for the temperature gauge on the dashboard. See, it's this wire here. Goes. Look at how this exhaust is. It comes out here and it goes over the engine. Yes. And it goes out the other side. And this bus bar here is they've got holes in these bolts going into the cylinder and then going through here to the bus bar. And it's uh, actually sucking off uh, unburnt fuel, fuel 
and it's going through here and there's a hole through the block here it goes over there to the oil uh, rectifier and it collects the oil and when it gets full up it's got a ball bearing in there it gets up to the top and it trips it and it puts the oil back into the cylinder and burns it off and goes out the back so if you've got a little the slightest leak in the vacuum then you've got blue smoke coming out of the back okay and this is extra oil yeah oil can for doing the oil and here's here's an oil thing here one here and maybe one on the yeah right here in the front and then you use because you got one down in there but this water pump's been rebuilt and uh let's see is this one yeah this one yeah it's still not tight okay now we're in here this is this is the distributor this is the oil pump this here is the leather gear that I make inside here in my workshop and it drives the generator off the oil pump at the bottom of the distributor got that got it <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah I'm recording you're doing all this oh, oh <laughs> nice and of course you you've got the, the this is the water at the bottom where it returns from the ra radiator yeah and goes into the engine block and this is the generator this is the cutout as as i call it and it's got the coil six volt coil and then this is the rectifier where you see where what's a rectifier do it pulls the the, the unburnt fuel off of the cylinders also on that bus bar on I told you about right that right side. it comes through right down through in here and, and it's probably right here this this tube here it comes down here and it goes into the rectifier and it collects the unburned oil and it fills back up and when it gets filled all the way up it's got a ball bearing in there and then it trips trips it and it all runs back into the in here into this uh, cylinders and it's burnt off and goes out the back. On the positive side, rare then, even rarer now, sleeve valve engine design, a totally different engine concept, another cool overlooked car from a lost brand, body parts shared with the popular Whippet line, so body parts may be easier to get than you would think. Dead silent, hence Silent Night reference. Against it, people who know these are getting very few and far between. Engine parts would be next to impossible to find because this, to my knowledge, is the only car that used this engine, to my knowledge. The Willis Knight used a bigger inline sleeve valve six. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. Would you rather have a 1928 Whippet or a 1928 Falcon Knight or 1928 Willis Knight? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. Would you rather have a 1928 Chevy or a 1928 Falcon Knight or 1928 Chrysler? Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. This is a car community that I'm very much a part of, so I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I'm pretty good at finding cars on the cheap. Take a look at some of the ones that I found earlier this week. If you'd like to get in touch with me on a more personal, intimate note, send me an email, all of which will be linked in the description below. Just know that I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. Thank you so much for digging this channel. And until next time, toodaloo!